everyone, I'm Katie Garceron and this is the Appalachian Weekly News, giving you your update for everything COVID-19 and Boone related for the third week of April. Thanks Katie. Now let's see how COVID-19 is affecting the high country. App Healthcare announced that an 8th Watauga County resident tested positive for COVID-19. The infected resident is recovering outside of the state. Those who came in contact with the infected resident have been notified. A fourth Ash County resident tested positive for COVID-19. The infected resident is recovering at home. App Healthcare staff are partnered with Boone Family Funeral Home to reach out to close contacts of the infected. Those who attended a funeral service operated by Boone Family Funeral Home from March 19th to April 2nd should contact public health staff to determine if further guidance for self-quarantine is necessary. You can contact public health staff by calling App Healthcare Office in Ash County. The phone number is 336-246-9449. Again, that is 336-246-9449. Some App State students are stuck in the middle ground when it comes to the CARES Act. Families who qualify for the stimulus check receive an extra $500 for children under 16. The Act excludes young adults who are dependent on their parents but don't make enough money to qualify for taxes. Adults with an income of at least $75,000 will receive $1,200. Couples who make up to $150,000 will receive $2,400. Parents who claim dependents will receive an, ex an additional $500 per child. Young adults are left out of this act. However, if all dependents act passes, the CARES Act boundaries would cover dependents ages 16 to 19 and students less than 24 years old. That's all from me. And now a word from our correspondent, Katie Garceron about how small businesses in Beach Mountain are dealing with COVID-19. COVID-19 has disrupted all of our livelihoods, but small businesses are facing the worst of it. Bill Pudney is the interim town manager of Beach Mountain. He says that small businesses are devastated. That's the lifeblood of our town. Uh, and to shut that off overnight, it, it, it's devastating to those businesses. These are people that are working literally paycheck to paycheck or they're living on you know, minimum wage and tips. And uh, when you just shut the business off in the, you know, literally one afternoon on five, at five o'clock, we said you're out of business. And there's uh, literally thousands in our uh, locale that were affected. Small towns like Beach Mountain almost completely rely on tourism and travel to survive. Kate Gavinis is the Director of Tourism and Economic Development in Beach Mountain. She says that small businesses are already being affected and some are worried. Yeah, we do have um, some, uh, some effects that have already happened. We, the, the ski resort, of course, had to close early, which meant all the ski shops closed early. Um, the Beach Mountain Resort summer season normally starts Memorial Day, but they have now moved that into June, so they are opening later. Um, we, we did have about half of the restaurants actually just closed down, but we do have some that are open for takeout only, and we do have a food truck that is staying open. That food truck is called the Accardi Brothers Pizza Pie Food Truck. Jimmy Accardi is the manager of the food truck and also the vice mayor of Beach Mountain. He says that normally he would be closed during this time, but because of COVID-19, that's all changed. I'm doing two things. I'm giving the guys enough hours so they can continue to receive a paycheck and the second thing is I'm just being there for the community as I mean literally as an option because there's nothing open really. And likewise the community is helping out small businesses by providing their support. I like get 10 emails a day or texts or phone calls like just saying thank you. <laughs> so we had um, I think it was because of Easter but a guy came by um, by the food truck and I was doing some yard work around the restaurant and he wanted to see me and he just gave me like a couple hundred dollars to split for the guys like as a tip he didn't buy anything he just said thank you for being open like so like you know we got really great people <laughs> and great people are what everyone needs to get through this tough time for the Appalachian Weekly News I'm Katie Garceron thanks Katie 
Roads, trails, and recreation sites in Pisgah National Forest will be off limits to the public until mid-August. Until August 14th, visitors will only be able to use certain roads, trails, and recreation areas developed by the United States Forest Service. The Nantahala, Uwari, and Croatan National Forests are still open to the public. For more information on the trail closures, go to the Appalachian online. Some rural towns have been reluctant to adopt social distancing to slow the spread of coronavirus. In North Carolina, Mecklenburg and Wake counties have the most confirmed cases. Only 4,600 people live in the small town of Granite Falls. The only signs of the pandemic in small towns like Granite Falls are the elimination of dine-in services and school closures. James Murdoch is a resident of Granite Falls. Murdoch says he isn't going to let the fear of coronavirus consume him, and he isn't going to let anything stop him from enjoying fishing. An App State alumnus lent their RV to a local healthcare worker. Robert Craven is a healthcare worker who works with potential coronavirus patients in South Carolina. Craven lives in a camper loaned to him by David Small, a former App State student. Small connected with Craven through the Facebook group RVs for MDs, where camper owners can offer their vehicles to healthcare workers who fear putting their families at risk but want to stay at home. Craven's wife, Abby, says that their two daughters are happier with their father at home. Quote, a week ago, every time Rob pulled away, they would cry for a good one or two hours and cry themselves to sleep at night. Now you can tell there is a new energy with them, end quote. Now, let's go to our correspondent, Zanaira Marine Lopez, with more COVID-19 news coverage. Zanaira? Thanks, Anna. Hello, everyone. I'm Zanaira Marine Lopez here with some more COVID-19 updates. Two App State students are taking the initiative in lending a hand to the aging population, who are at a higher risk for developing complications from COVID-19. Senior Kayla Bauman offered grocery runs for the elderly in a post on App State Classifieds. Kayla uses Walmart pickup options when helping. Those needing groceries can add items to their cart and pay via Walmart's website. Bowman offers to pick up the items from the grocery chain and drop them off at an elder's doorstep within social distancing guidelines. Jake Heller, a music therapist and graduate student, also took to App State Classifieds to volunteer. Jake, with the help of his wife, proposed to help wherever a hand is needed. Jake says, quote, we're all in this together, so even if we are socially distancing ourselves, we can still help each other in different ways." End quote. As government policies and stay-at-home orders are issued across the country, emergency service departments in Watauga County are making changes both in and out of their stations to keep up with the COVID-19 pandemic. Boone Fire Department's Fire Prevention Captain Jacob Burleson says that certain calls are now handled differently to avoid unnecessary exposure and potential spread of possible illness. During an emergency, Burleson says things are, quote, absolute business as usual. Owner and director of Watauga Medics, Craig Sullivan, says they have changed what kind of personal protective equipment medics wear and carry into situations. Sullivan says, quote, we've trained on infectious diseases for years, so it's nothing we're not trained on, nothing we can't handle. We'll get through this just like anything else, end quote. Many North Carolina residents are left without a source of income as restaurants, schools, and businesses close to flatten the curve and fight the spread of the novel coronavirus. From March 15th to April 16th, there have been 636,894 COVID-19-related unemployment insurance claims, according to the North Carolina Division of Employment Security. Complications accessing the benefit system online and over the phone have soared over the last few weeks due to this overwhelming amount of claims. While the state says 850 people are working to process claims, hundreds of thousands need help. To file a claim, you can file online at des.nc.gov, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. With an online account, you will complete required weekly certifications and check your claim status. Weekly certifications are a series of questions that verify you are able, available, and looking for work during a given week. You may also contact the Customer Call Center toll-free at 888-737-0259. You will need your Social Security number, information about your most recent employment and pay, your work history for the last two years, and your bank routing and account numbers for a direct deposit when filing a claim. 
speak to your employer about who is filing. An attached claim is a claim filed by an employer on behalf of the employee who has been temporarily laid off. If an employer refuses to file on your behalf, you must file your own claim and meet all eligibility requirements. After filing a claim, you will receive a wage transcript and monetary determination form by mail, which will include your weekly benefit amount. Payment is typically received within about 14 days of filing an initial claim, as long as there are no issues with the claim. After filing your claim, your last employer is given 10 days, by law, to respond to DES about your claim, and no payment will be released until after this 10-day period. You will receive payments by direct deposit or debit card. Be prepared to possibly face a longer waiting period after filing an initial claim and continue to contact DES with any issues. For more information on unemployment, visit des.nc.gov. For the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Zanarmi Lopez. Now we go to our reporter, Katie Garceron, with some non-COVID news. Thank you so much for that, Zanaira. We appreciate the update. An App State alumni discovered a new dinosaur species. Jared Boris was studying skull fragments when he noticed a unique jawline on one of the fossils. It had never been seen before, and the 80 million year old discovery gained worldwide attention. Forrest named the species something I sadly cannot pronounce, but it translates to the Death Reaper. According to National Geographic, the dinosaur would have been 8 feet tall and over 30 feet long. Runoff elections for student body president continue April 16th through the 20th. Davis and Hunter receive 35.61% of the vote in the general election, while Hudson and Melger are close behind at 35.45%. Mullins and Martin followed with 27.73%. Students who voted in the general election can vote in the runoff. Speaking of the election, the Davis and Hunter campaign was found responsible for malicious campaigning. The situation started when the Davis Hunter campaign reposted an Instagram containing a comment about SGA. The elections court said the comment posted could imply some campaigns engaged in certain practices that others don't. Gabby Romero, who posted the Instagram, responded to the court with a statement. She says, quote, I posted my own opinion on my private personal Instagram account, which did not mention this current election nor any campaign, end quote. Mullen said malicious campaigning sends a poor message and ultimately reflects badly on the campaign itself. Local organizations work to help domestic violence victims in the high country. According to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, 24 people are raped every minute. The Legal Aid for North Carolina provides free legal clinics for domestic violence victims. Jonathan Perry is an attorney at the Legal Aid. He and his team host the free clinics every Friday from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. The clinic meets behind the Jones Community House at 171 Grand Boulevard. On campus, students also have access to the Red Flag Campaign. This on-campus organization encourages students to be active bystanders. These are people who step in and prevent a bad situation from happening. OASIS also offers services to students of App State. On top of this, they serve survivors of both Watauga and Avery counties. They have many different programs and offer both temporary and permanent housing. If you or someone you know is suffering from domestic violence, please contact one of these programs. And now we're gonna hear from Jason James with sports. Thank you for joining us on this edition of App Weekly News. I'm Jason James coming to you from China Grove, North Carolina, with your weekly sports update. App State Athletics is predicted to lose around $1.5 million due to the coronavirus pandemic. Athletic Director Doug Gillen stated on a Zoom call that, quote, we are working on all scenarios and from a budgeting standpoint, this is what it could become. Certainly, our budgets will be lower moving forward, unquote. The $1.5 million loss is about 4% of the budget when it comes to App State Athletics. The new Quinn Cent Recreation Center floors were included in the approved capital projects. On March 27th, a Zoom conference call was conducted and six infrastructure projects were approved. Some of those projects are the Jerry Moore Plaza, dining reservations and planning, and resurfacing the Quinn Recreation basketball courts. The projects are scheduled to be completed this summer and will cost approximately $730,128. Paul Forte is the Vice Chancellor for Business Affairs. He said, quote, 
the projects are funded by trust fund reserves and won't increase student fees, unquote. The Jerry Moore Plaza will be built in front of the east end zone of Kid Brewer Stadium to honor former football coach Jerry Moore. The project is funded through donations and is scheduled to be completed by July of 2021. The total price for the project is around $495,000. That's all for this week's update in sports. Now let's check in with Hadassah Rivera for this week's Spanish translation. Mi nombre es Adasa Rivera, hoy es lunes 20 de abril y estoy aquí con su actualización regional de COVID-19. App Healthcare anunció el 13 de abril que otro residente dio positivo para nuevo coronavirus. Esto marca el octavo caso en el condado de Watauga. La persona tiene un historial de viajes y se está recuperando en aislamiento fuera del estado. El personal del Departamento de Salud local también identificó contactos cercanos quienes ahora se encuentran en cuarentena. A medida que las pólizas gubernamentales y órdenes de quedarse en casa se emiten en todo el país, los departamentos de emergencia en el condado de Watauga están haciendo ajustes en sus estaciones para mantenerse al día con la pandemia. Jacob Burleson, el capitán de prevención de incendios del Departamento de Bomberos de Boone, dijo que puede haber situaciones no emergentes en las que el departamento no es el proveedor de atención, de atención primaria. En estos casos, los que responden son el personal médico de apoyo. En situaciones como estas, el Departamento de Bomberos responderá en la escena, pero primero los médicos deben brindar atención y decidir si necesitan ayuda adicional. Los médicos de Wetaga también han cambiado el tipo de equipos de protección personal que usan y llevan a los diferentes sitios. Para cualquier tipo de llamada respiratoria, los médicos deben entrar con el equipo de protección completo. Esto incluye equipos como máscaras, batas y guantes. Un cuarto residente del condado de Ash dio positivo para el nuevo coronavirus el 10 de abril. El residente tiene antecedentes de viajes conocidos y se está recuperando en casa. El personal de App Healthcare se está asociando con Boone Family Funeral Home para comunicarse con residentes que necesiten permanecer en cuarentena durante 14 días para evitar una posible propagación del virus. Aquellos que asistieron a un servicio funerario operado por Boone Family Funeral Home o visitaron este establecimiento entre el 19 de marzo y el 2 de abril deben comunicarse con el personal de salud pública. Llame a la oficina de App Healthcare en el condado de Ash al 336 246-9449 para una entrevista. A medida que los restaurantes, las escuelas y las empresas se cierran para combatir la propagación del coronavirus, muchos residentes de Carolina del Norte se están quedando sin una fuente de ingreso. Del 16 de marzo al 9 de abril ha habido 444,178 reclamos de seguro de desempleo relacionados con COVID-19 según la División de Seguridad de Empleo de Carolina del Norte. Las complicaciones para acceder al sistema de beneficios en línea y por teléfono han incrementado radicalmente en las últimas semanas debido a una gran cantidad de reclamos. Lockhart Taylor, subsecretario de Seguridad Laboral, presentó nuevas medidas en la sesión informativa del 2 de abril. Taylor dice que no piensan descansar hasta que se haya procesado cada solicitud y se hayan distribuido los cheques a cada destinario elegible en el estado de Carolina del Norte. Para más información acerca del procedimiento, visite nuestro sitio web en theappalachianonline.com. Gracias por ver. Los mantendremos informados acerca de más noticias sobre el nuevo coronavirus. A continuación, Sanaira Marín López con su reporte. Gracias, Edasa. Soy Sabrina López aquí con algunas actualizaciones más. Un alumno de App State prestó su RV a un trabajador de salud local. Robert Craven es un trabajador de la salud que trabaja con pacientes potenciales con coronavirus. Craven vive en una caravana prestada por David Small, un ex estudiante de App State. Small se conectó con Craven a través del grupo de RV de Facebook para MD donde los propietarios de autocaravanas pueden ofrecer sus vehículos a los trabajadores de la salud que temen poner en riesgo a sus familias, pero quieren quedarse en casa. La esposa de Craven, Abby, dice que sus dos hijas están más felices con su padre en casa. Abby dice en una sitia, hace una semana cada vez que Rob se alejaba, lloraban por una o dos horas y lloraban hasta la noche. 
Ahora se nota que hay una nueva energía con ellos. Algunos cuidados rurales han sido reacios a adoptar distanciamiento social para frenar la propagación del coronavirus. En Carolina del Norte, los condados de Mecklenburg y Wake tienen los casos más confirmados. Solo 4,600 personas viven en el pequeño pueblo de Granite Falls. Los únicos signos de la pandemia en pueblos pequeños como Granite Falls son la eliminación de los servicios de cena y el cierre de las escuelas. James Murdoch es un residente de Granite Falls. Murdoch dice que no dejará que el miedo al coronavirus lo consuma y que no dejará que nada le impida disfrutar de la pesca. Los caminos, senderos y sitios de recreación en el Bosque Nacional Pisca estarán fuera del alance de público hasta mediados de agosto. Hasta el 14 de agosto, los visitantes solo podrán usar ciertas carreteras, senderos y áreas de recreación desarrolladas por el Servicio Forestal de los Estados Unidos. Los bosques nacionales de Nantuhela, Uwari y Croatán todavía están abiertos al público. Para obtener más información sobre los cierres de senderos, vayan a los apelaches en línea. Dos estudiantes de App State están tomando la iniciativa de echar un mano a la aprobación de NBGC, que tienen un mayor riesgo de desarrollar complicaciones por COVID-19. La estudiante de último año, Kayla Bauman, ofreció cereras de comestibles para los ancianos de una publicación en AFSI Classifieds. Kayla usa las opciones de recolección de Walmart cuando ayuda. Aquellos que necesiten alimentos pueden agregar artículos a su carito y pagar a través del sitio web de Walmart. Bowman ofrece recoger los artículos de la cadena de supermercados y dejarlos en la puerta de un anciano dentro de las patas de distanciamiento social. Jake Keller, una musicoterapeuta estudiante de posgrado, también se voluntario a AFC Classifieds. Jake, con la ayuda de su esposa, propició ayudar donde sea que necesite un mano. Jake dice en una sitia, estamos todos juntos en esto, así que incluso si no estamos distanciamiento social, aún podemos ayudarnos unos a otros de diferentes maneras. Eso es todo de mí esta semana. Mi nombre es Anaira Marín López y gracias por ver los Appalachian Weekly News. Watching. We'll keep you posted on more novel coronavirus updates. For the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Grace Smith.